Everybody make some noise, Jack and Lord. Amen. Good morning, Facebook family. Amen. We come to all join. Amen. To be in the house of God one more time. We come this morning to have an awesome time in the Lord. We come this morning because God has been good to us. He allowed us another day to get it right. Amen. And for that, we're grateful. Amen. And for that, we owe Him the praise. For that, we owe Him the honor this morning. And most of all, for that, we owe Him the glory this morning. So, we're going to ask you this morning if you're here to your home. And if God has been good to you, I just need somebody to shout this morning. I just need somebody to scream this morning.
Sometimes we give ourselves away to the wrong person. Or we give ourselves away to the wrong place. Or we give ourselves away to the wrong thing. But I know that song because they were telling the Lord, I give myself away. Come on, give God a praise this morning. Hallelujah. We thank God for the praise and worship team. We thank God for you this morning. Did you feel like you're free this morning? Come on, clap your hands. If you feel like you're free this morning, come on, clap your hands. If you feel like you've been set free this morning, come on, clap your hands.
scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone. You may be seated. Elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Welcome to my time where you will love me and what? And ain't nobody going to run you off. Amen. Every first Sunday is our communion Sunday. Let's give it up. Yeah, hallelujah. Every second Sunday is our women's Sunday. Women, let me hear you. Let's yeah. All right, men. And today is Men's Sunday. Men, let me hear you. chapter of Exodus, amen, the first five verses, amen, I'll tell you, i tell you, amen, we have been learning some stuff, we have been learning some stuff, we have been learning some stuff, amen, and so we just ask you to stop by, amen, some, some Monday nights, amen, and see about us, amen, this is the only Bible study that I can say that I haven't been with, we, don't, we, we let the Lord use it, amen, we don't rush through it, amen, we take our time, but Regardless of how long we're there, it don't seem like we've been there for a long time, amen. But we just enjoy God and enjoy what God is doing on that line. And so if there's any men out there, amen, that you want to tap in, amen, we will have the, 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 the information, amen, sent to you. But I guarantee you, amen, this is, this is a time where the men, the brethren, can come together and iron, sharp, and iron, amen, and see what the Lord has for us. Ain't the Lord all right? Yay. Ain't the Lord all right? Yay. Amen. You enjoy yourself so far, amen. Come on, put your hands together this morning, amen. Down with you, amen. You are a nice, warm welcome to our pastor this morning. Come on, blow your horns, make some noise, amen. Our first lady, sit over there, amen. Come on, let's make some noise, amen. Let's make some noise for the first family this morning. Hallelujah. Now do me a favor, amen. Let's make some noise for yourself this morning, amen. As you go to my man this morning, and said, I'm going to go see what the Lord has. Over there, I'm going to And because you're here this morning, because you're here this morning, because you're here this morning, come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm just trying to help you give God an advanced praise, amen, for what he got for you, amen. I'm just trying to push you out there to praise God in advance, amen, for the blessing he had for you this week. You don't see it, amen, but I see it. So I'm trying to get you to praise God in spite of. I'm trying to get you to praise Him in spite of. Woo! Because I see you in the future. And you look better. Somebody shout, 
Amen. Oh, gracious Father God, we thank you so much, God, for those that gave and those that had the will, but not the means. We ask, Heavenly Father, that these funds, God, be used for the good, for their keep, and the better of your kingdom. We ask, Lord, that you bless those that gave, God, 100 fold, Father God, for believing in you. And we ask, Heavenly Father, that Mount Zion continue, Father God, to be a field that can plant up, Father God, that, Father God, that, that you desire in those things that you want to better this world, Father. We love you. We thank you. We honor you. Together we say amen. 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 We do thank you for your generosity. Amen. By way of giving. Somebody give God a praise. Come on, somebody give God a praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God is truly good to us. Somebody say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on. Somebody shout yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. God is just in the blessing business. Amen. We thank those. Amen. That. Time did not rob her this morning, amen, to come and just sow into this ministry because I guarantee you are, you are sowing into good ground. Somebody shout good ground. Good ground. Come on, somebody shout good ground. Good ground. Amen. Type it in, son. Somebody just type in good ground, amen, because the Spirit of God is moving freely here, amen. We just thank God for the leadership, amen, here at Mount Zion, and we thank you once again by your way of giving, amen. Truly, God would give it back to you, press down, shaking together. Somebody shout, run it over. Amen. We'll give it unto you. Amen. So this time, Amen. Deacon Cope is coming with the reading of the scripture as we move forward into our service. Somebody shout, Amen. amen. Come on, give him a hand, praise as he comes this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, my Zion. Good morning. Well, it's good to be a born crowd. It's another day. We could have been over here with dropping missiles and rockets in the motherland. But thank God, we're here. Uh, And if any, and if Christ be in you, yes, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit lives because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raises up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwells in you. Therefore, brothers, we are dead, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do your mortal deed of the body, ye shall live. For many as are led by the Spirit of God. They are the sons of God. I have read you um, chapter 10, Romans 10 to 15. May the Lord bless everyone and each one of you. Thank you. Amen. We thank Deacon Croker, amen, for the reading of the scripture this morning. Amen. Come on, give him a hand, praise this morning. Amen. At this time, our first lady is coming. Amen. With an announcement at this time. Good morning, Mount Zion. Good morning. Good morning. So, on 
October the 23rd, 2021 at 5 p.m. We will be celebrating our 10th year anniversary. We have something very special planned from our Zion this year. We will be having a banquet. This banquet is going to be at the Hilton Orlando in Altamont Springs. It's at 5 p.m. And we have laid it all out. We have a carving station. We have plated dinners where they will come out and serve us. And we don't have to set up or serve nothing this year. So our carving station is a, a um, what is this, pepper crusted top round of beef. We have Caesar salad, we have Caribbean chicken, um, cannoli cake and strawberry cheesecake. We have it all, we have it all ladies and gentlemen. So what we're asking to be a blessing to the ministry this year, we're asking each one of us to include Pastor and myself, is $100 per ticket. <laughs> And this is to help us kick off not only our 10th year anniversary, but we're trying to get a building. We already have what we're looking at in place and store. We're already doing the groundwork to get our building. And we are believing that God is going to bless us to be able to come out. Because as you see, we have outgrown our building. So now, Zane, do you all want higher? Come on, give another brother a hand, praise the man. 
Amen. We will thank God, thank God for our church brothers, amen, and all the ladies here at Mount Zion, amen. We just try to do our part as men, amen, to show our appreciation to all the mothers, amen, here at Mount Zion because God has blessed us truly with some great church mothers here. And we just thank God for them, all of them, amen. We thank God for all the church mothers, amen, and those that are inspired to be a church mother. We thank God for you in advance, amen. But it's time. Somebody says it's time. It's time this morning, amen, for the word of God. Somebody shout the word. Amen. And once again, God has sent the messenger, amen, amen, to spring forth the word, amen. And we just so happy, amen, for our leader here at Mount Zion Tabernacle, Christian Church, amen. We're so grateful for this leader, amen. He's not just any ordinary leader, amen. He's a leader that goes above and beyond, amen. He's a leader, amen, that works in the community tireless, amen. He's a, he's a leader, amen, that tries to find the people that ever he can, all he can. We just thank God for the leader, amen, of this, of this great church here on Silver Star Road this morning. I need somebody that makes some noise, amen, like you, like you're trying to call your name. But we just thank God, amen, for our leader, Lord, that all the stand with him. You would stand this morning with us, amen. As we welcome once again, amen, the leader, amen, of Mount Zion Tabernacle Christian Church. Amen, the senior pastor here, amen. I need you to blow your horns this morning. I need you to make some noise right now, brother. Don't you make that answer to this morning. Yeah. 
morning. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody got buried yesterday. Yes. Somebody didn't wake up this morning. Yes. Anybody know who's been taken time from life's traumatic situations? No, it is a blessing to be up this morning. Yes. Yes. Grab your Bibles if you will. We're going quickly to the book of Romans. My God, Reverend. Mm. The book of Romans, the 12th chapter. Man, those that can and will, they just stand for a moment for the reading of the Word of God. The book of Romans, chapter 12. I give you not a verse, that means you will start where? First verse. From the first verse. The book of Romans, chapter 12. You have to say amen? And so it reads. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, yes. by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And from our politics, verse 2, he says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God for I say through the grace unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself or herself more highly than he or she ought to think but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man to every man the measure of faith. You may be seated. Put your hands together for our presider today, Pastor Richard Paul. Give a round of praise for our praise team, the musicians today. as plain can get. But I want you to think about how beautiful life is. That even though things may not be going the way you would like, there is still life in your mind, body, and spirit. So give it all to our God, to His Son that died on Calvary's cross, to our comfort to yet still the Holy Spirit. To those who are guests of us today here in the National and those over the airways, we hope thus far you have seen and experienced the presence of the Lord. To the best church, my side of heaven, Mount Zion Tabernacle Christian Church, where we will love you, and ain't nobody going to run you off. To the data in my case, the pro in my progress. Put your hands together for First Lady to be the Lord. And all of her glory. She has been experiencing a monumental time of enjoying herself prior to our ball renewal. She has a plethora of ladies from various backgrounds and demographics and economic statuses who have created some silent secret sorority. that I am sure no man will ever be a part of. So I thank you ladies for loving on her. Amen. And so let's get to the word today. I will be strong. I promise you we will not be long, but we will be long enough. This great book of Romans, the 45th book in the Bible, the 6th book, in the New Testament, written by the Apostle Paul to the Christians of Rome. 
written some 57 years after the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Compounded with 16 chapters, 433 verses, 9,422 King James words. He took the time in chapters 1 through 8 to talk about the power of the gospel. Chapters 9 through 11, he begins to bring in the, the role of Israel and how it meshes into the newfound love of the gospel. Chapters 12 through 16, he now speaks to those believers in the role of the gospel. And I want to encourage you that it is more than just showing up at a place of worship that saves you. Yeah. It's more than memorizing scripture that will save you. Uh, it's not how many songs you can sing or even how many sermons you can preach that will save you. For your life must match your lips. This particular text brings to us where he says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That ye may prove, that ye may prove, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. My brothers and sisters, this is going to be strong. I promise you that if you think I'm talking about you, you're absolutely correct. Because I'm talking to me too. But if I had a way to encourage you today, find somebody, look at him and say, Pastor's going to preach about a true breakthrough. It can be a challenge to serve God in all that you have and not see the change you would expect. It can be heart-wrenching to pray and praise and serve and give and still not see any manifestation or results of that service to God. It can feel a way when you think you've done all you can but you just can't stay. It hurts when you have taken the time to be a blessing to others who are being a burden to you. Am I by myself this morning? I want to encourage you that those who still stand on the word to know that God is watching, seeing, and seeing setting things up for you not just through the season or the time, but the timing. Sometimes the season is right. The time is in flourish, but the timing is wrong. And so, I remember as a young boy, sometimes you would be out and you would be playing in the yard or playing out with friends and you know, you always had that friend in the neighborhood that nobody really should have been hanging with, but you hung with him and and mama had a cookie, a piece of candy, and, and brought mama because she wouldn't, she, she would hold it in the house till you came in. Because she didn't want you to share it with those who wouldn't appreciate it. So I stopped by to encourage you that God has got a special blessing with your name on it. He's just waiting on you to come on back in the house to receive it. Some things Pookie and Ray Ray can't have. Some things Boquish don't need to hear about. He's destined it just for you, not for you to hold on to, but to be prepared to share it with others at a certain time, season, and timing. So a true breakthrough, what does it feel like? What does it mean to have a true breakthrough? Well, I'm glad Deacon Croker, Deacon Milton, Deacon C, and I'm glad why you asked. Let's look at the text. In verse 2, he says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 
I gave all it to my wife today. She bought me a brand new Bible with some big old letters on it. And my God is jumping off the page here. So let's look at the text. He says, and be not conformed to this world. For a true breakthrough, point number one is no more struggle. It is hard trying to be two different people. One for God and one for the world. You know how we do our Monday through Saturday. We're everything but what we should be in God. And it's not that we don't know any better. It's not that we don't understand scripture. It's not that we don't know what praise and worship is. It's not that we don't know how to pray. It's that we are intentionally finding a way to give ourselves to people, to places, and to things that we know mean us no good. Listen, the, 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 I ain't gonna get no amen on this, but it's for me here. But when you begin to say I got no more struggles, that means my breakthrough has come. I don't fight with folk no more about foolishness because I walk in favor. The stuff they worry about, it don't bother me no more. And the things I concern with, they ask me why am I all upset about it? Because I believe that greater is always needed of us and we cannot settle with mediocre lifestyles. It's got to be more than just the things we obtain. It's got to be more than just the pats on the back. Because guess what? After a while, they forget your name. If you don't think it's somebody on their way behind you to replace you, then the Bible calls you a fool. There's always God's hand moving from prophet to prophet. And so the little time that I got left on this earth, it means everything to me. So if I seem a little uh, straight up about things when it comes to doing God's work, it's because I know there's going to come a day I'm not going to be able to do God's work like I used to. I'm not going to be able to stand like I'm standing. I'm not going to be able to preach like I'm preaching. I'm not going to be able to sing like I'm singing. And ain't nobody going to be coming by. And ain't nobody going to be calling. And it's going to be me and the Lord. So while I got time and strength in my body, I'm going to praise God with all that I have. Do I got any watch my watch believers today that will say, I stand in what you're saying, Pastor. I'm going to bless the Lord. All my soul and all that is within me. I'm visiting people who are in hospitals and rehab centers and, and they're saying, I wish I could get to church. I wish somebody would call me. I wish somebody would check on me. And y'all fall when people calls all day long. You got so many calls, you don't even want to take them. You're forward. Swipe right. Swipe right. Swipe right. Then you're going to hit back. I'll call you back. Talk to you later. Call you later. Whatever your prop says in your phone. And you don't call back. You don't check back in. And it's apparent to me that this world that we're in, if you do not see the shift in the atmosphere of what God is setting up in this world, you are going to have a rude awakening when it finally manifests into the natural world. God is trying to give us a chance to set ourselves up to be beacons of light to so many people that are going to be lost, family and friend, co-worker alike, that are going to maybe say, I don't know much about God, but because I'm watching your life and what you're saying and what you're doing, I want to know more and I want to learn more and I want to do more. What what must I do to be saved? Well, this quiet this morning. Not anyway. Uh, so the first point is I must struggle no more with my identity of who God is to me. If I don't know who I am in God, then I need to get somewhere and learn. And you're not going to get it all. Watching somebody at 10, watching somebody at 10.30, watching somebody at 11, and watching somebody at 12. You're going to have to, as Grandma said, get rooted 
and ground it somewhere so that you can not only get what you need in the word, but you can also get the love that you need to go with it. And love is three critical things. Love is correction. Love is protection. Love is direction. And if you struggle with any of those three things, then you're not going to be able to handle the spirit of the Lord. Continues to write, he said, be not conformed to this world. And what he's saying is not necessarily the streets and the highways, the hedges. He's talking about the experiences of the world. Now we all got some stuff now. Y'all ain't never. Y'all ain't never. Oh, y'all something, the holiest folk I ever met. Ain't, has anybody ever done something that they regretted in their life? Anybody ever said something they shouldn't have said or done something they shouldn't have done? Been somewhere they shouldn't have been. But the beautiful part of it is, is with those of us who love God, when we see that we're on track with God, we do our best to get back in the spirit and truth. We get humble before the Lord. We cry out to God and say, God, it's me again. Standing murder, standing in the need of prayer. Said some stuff I shouldn't have said. Done some stuff I shouldn't have done. And I need you to work on me, Lord, because I know you're going to still use me for your work, for your will, and for your way. Look at somebody said, no more struggle. I know who I am. And I know who I am in God. He goes further into the text. He says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. We're talking about a true breakthrough now. Now he's saying, struggle no more. And now he's saying, stagnant no more. There is no way that I can be transformed and continue to renew my mind and not be moving in God. Okay, let me, let me break that down. Let me help some of y'all. You cannot go to college sit in class, hear the information, say you study, and keep coming up with else. Okay, let me try this. You cannot get on your job, be there 40 hours a week, say you work all 40 hours, and not show any progress on the job. So if the work is not getting done, then the only belief is you didn't do the work. Now maybe you did it at your pace or the way you wanted it done. The problem is when you got hired, you told the people you would do it the way they wanted it. So if you coming up shout, it ain't the job. Because you said you would do what they said they needed done. That ain't happening. Come on. So here's where we fall short. We begin to learn how to work the job to our event. We stand around it long enough, we know how to manipulate the job. Where it looked like, Sister Keisha. We doing the, it looked like we doing the work. But in reality, we're not. So what am I saying in the spirit realm? Some of us have learned how to manipulate being a body of Christ. We look the part. We clap our hands. We say amen. But after hours, in the midnight hour, we should be praying and reading our word. We're too busy watching Netflix. I ain't gonna get no help. It's okay. I got videos that I know I shouldn't be looking at. I'm looking at. I got books I'm reading I know I shouldn't be reading because they ain't the Bible. And I'm in places I know I shouldn't be at because they don't look nothing like church. But then I'm upset because I keep reminding myself why am I going through like 
like I'm going through? Why does it seem like I'm not getting ahead? Why does it seem like I'm coming up short? And God is simply saying that if you begin to put your mind where my mind is and renew it. The Bible says renewing, that means it's always time for change. That's the problem. Most of us don't change, we adjust. Say that. We adjust to our situation. If I need to wear a hat, I wear a hat. But my, my grandma used to say, put some in your head instead of on your head. And so you have to ask yourself, if my mind is renewing, why am I still talking old? If I'm a new creature, why am I still doing the same old things that to take me from God? And don't get me wrong, it is a process, yes. It is a walk, yes. But just like anything in life, if you can overcome other things in your life, you can start putting that same mindset of renewing to your love and life with God. And so he says here, but be you transformed by the renewing of my mind. That means my mind is not stagnant. That my mind is not just in neutral. Anybody ever been to a, a car lot? Oh, boy, I used to sell cars. You ever, you ever look at it and it looks so good on the outside? I mean, they done washed it up, they done waxed it up, pat, they got that thing looking nice. And you get in it, and it crank up and sound real good. And then you put it in dry. And it don't move. And then what they tell you is, oh, we'll fix that. I stopped by to tell you that if you're working it out with the Lord, you gotta already have your hood up so he can start working up under them. They can start giving you the oil change you need, transmission fluid things with you. Need. Start putting a new star and alternator on you. Start putting some new belts on them, getting your all up and getting your right. So when you crank up and then put it in dry, you'll be able to move the way you need you to move. That you can transform yourself from being a whole beat up harder to a Mercedes being. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. I ain't saying you gotta have no beans, that's just what I like driving. But what I'm saying is whatever you're gonna be, God can make you a new creature and all things can pass away. Do I got any people that wanna be renewed today? I'm tired of my whole life. I'm tired of doing the same thing and no progress coming. I'm tired of doing the same old, same old kind of women, same old kind of men. I'm looking for new or doing the same old thing. You a blood washed believer, you want an unsaved man and you want to do what? He might be a good man, but is he a godly man? Is he convicted in the spirit, not just feel guilty when he do something wrong? He want to make it right with God first. Other before he want to make it right with you. I'm not by myself. Y'all quiet. I'm just going to tell you about the kind of men we got over here in Mount Zion Tabernacle Christian Church. Because that's the way we're going to hold them accountable over here. And if you don't like the way the ball run, then take your ball and go home. Because on this court right here, you're going to stand up in excellence before the spirit of God and the people that reside in this place. We will not come here and work the seats. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. But if you think I'm talking about you, you're absolutely correct. Yeah. We've got to be conscious about what we're doing, the struggle and in the stagnant of life. Because God is going to bring it to our attention, everybody, that we have stumbled and fumbled along the way while we claimed we were saved. That's the stuff he's going to be looking at. Now the stuff we did in a foolish mindset, he knows we were foolish. But for those of us who now say we are believers, he's going to bring it to our attention, everyone we stumble and fumble because we know how to manipulate the text. And that includes pastors too. Yeah. I might have lost four people just now. Yeah. 
And so, Come on. he brings a hit to the end. He says, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And so now he's saying a true breakthrough that I struggle no more. He says, and a true breakthrough that I'm stagnant no more. And now he says, and a true breakthrough that I'm silent no more. Because one of the worst things you do when you love God is go dead on the Lord. You change how you talk when you're around certain people. But you're wide open when you have the two for ones and the ladies get in free. And just because you go to an all white party, it don't make you pure. It's just the clothes that are white. And your body's still dark. And your spirit's still dark. But I know somebody that was able to do some beautiful things. And he decided that he was going to get it out no more. He was going to make some things right. So he decided some 42 generations ago that he would come down and set things straight. I don't know about you, but I'm learning more and more just how precious the time I got left. I don't know about you, but when you think about your life, I just had a friend who eats right, she lives right, she talks right, she does her best to live right, she found out she was having some chest pains. She went to the doctor, and the doctor told her she had all kind of blockage. And she said, when I eat right, and I try to walk right, and I try to talk right, and I try to do well to others. Now her mama died of the very same thing, and her daddy died of the very same thing. And some would say, and this family history. But I believe that the same God that gave it to them is the same God that saved her life. I don't know about you, but I got a mother who died of Alzheimer's. Her mama died of Alzheimer's. Her daddy died of Alzheimer's. So there's a chance that family history says that I might die of Alzheimer's. But the same God that took my mother and the same God that took my parents is the same God that protect me from it. I believe that if I walk right and I talk right and I take the time to not waste my time is there anybody that can wave their hand and say, I should have been dead and God got me through? The doctor said there was nothing else that they could do. But God, God, he woke up the spirit in me and he woke up the spirit in you. Is there anybody that will wave their hand, that will blow their horn, and say, My God, my God, my God, got on the cross from the sixth to the ninth hour. My God, walk that throne some 200 yards, carried the cross some 300 pounds. My God, got on 